you probably, um, if you've seen any of my reviews about pencils, you will know that I am a total pencil geek. Um, but I thought I was like the ultimate pencil geek until I found a podcast called The Erasable Podcast. And um, I actually stumbled upon it because I stumbled upon their Facebook group. So you can find a link to their Facebook group down below. I'll include that as well as their podcast. Um, it's three guys who spend a lot of time talking about pencils and their following of people are obsessed about pencils in a way that I don't even think I can get obsessed about pencils in the way that they are. So um, <clears throat> what's cool is that when you uh, follow along on the Facebook group, a lot of people trade pencils. And so I um, stumbled across a cool little sketchbook pencil and sticker set when I went to um, an art museum that I teach at that was doing a big grand opening of a new pavilion. And um, when I collected the sketchbook and pencil, I decided that I didn't want to use it. Um, so I offered it up as a trade <coughs> and somebody took me up on it. So I wanted to show you what I traded. And here's a picture of the um, sketchbook and pencil and sticker. And then let's go ahead and look down and you'll see that somebody named Cassidy, hey Cassidy, um, was excited to get that collection um, or pencil and sketchbook and sticker in their collection. So they traded all of these pencils for me. I had asked her for um, Indian pencils because I didn't have any. So she included the Apsara, Absolute Extra Dark, the um, Nataraj Pop 2B. I've never seen that one before, so I was really excited to use those two. Um, and then she included a couple of other ones like the vintage um, uh, Eberhard Faber. This is the Faber Castell um, company now, the Mongol H. And she included two of those, so I sharpened one of them up to be able to use it. I've been using that one in the studio, I like it a lot. Then she included two, let's see, where are the other ones? These are the Faber um, Mongol Fine Writing number two. I sharpened one of those up. I used that one a lot this week too. I liked it, although I like the H a lot better. Then she gave me some Japanese pencils, the Mitsubishi 9800 HB. And since she gave me two of those, I sharpened one of those. Um, oh gosh, I just realized that I loaned one of these pencils, um, the Nano Dia B. I, she gave me a pink one that I sharpened and I loaned that to a parent of a student and I never got it back. I'm going to have to hunt her down next week to get it back. Um, so I did sharpen the pink one and I kept the blue one unsharpened. And then these were one off, so <clears throat> the Palomino Blackwing um, <laughs> volume. I don't know what this is, volume one, 10,001. I didn't sharpen that one. I also didn't sharpen these other vintage ones. The, um, I thought it was a, oh no, this is the American one, the Musgraves News uh, 600. And what is this one? The Venus, that one is one of the vintage ones. So I didn't sharpen that one. Um, so some of these I'll keep to either keep in my collection or trade again, and then some of them I was happy to use. Um, the two that I used the most were the Mongol H and the Mongol um, number two. I really didn't like the number two, so I'll probably trade that one up with somebody. And then I did like the H, um, but I think it's kind of fun. Uh, I don't think I'm going to develop a large pencil collection. All of the pencils that you all see me buying and reviewing in my videos, I use them all up. I use them to draw when I'm in the studio with my students. So um, I'm probably not going to be one of those people that has hordes and boxes of, of pencils to collect just for collecting. Instead, it was just kind of fun to execute a trade and to meet all these other people who are so geeked out about pencils that it made me feel like I'm kind of mild in comparison. <laughs> so. Um, so check out the links below and hopefully you'll meet some other nice pencil people where you live.